Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Foryam. Welcome to the channel. Only two days ago, Valheim got released, guys, and this early access game is a hidden gem. That is also why I really wanted to make this very first video to show you guys around. If you're a big fan of Skyrim, Minecraft, and also The Forest, this is definitely a title for you. It's a massive open world survival game where you have to craft, build, and survive in some very harsh environments. And today, I will show you the very basics of it, show you your way around, how to survive your very first minutes in Valheim. So guys, let's get right to it. All right, so here we are in the character selection screen. This is my main character, which I have played for almost 18 hours already in just two days. But um, let's make a new character for this tutorial. So I really like to go with a male one because their beards are looking super epic. Okay, so we just created our character. Right now, we have to select a world where we like to play on. You can choose for either a single player world or multiplayer. I definitely suggest you guys to get your hands on a dedicated server so you will be able to play with friends all the time because um, a single player world won't be online 24 seven. So uh, we're gonna create a new one right here. Let's call it Valhalla 4 am Of course, if you want friends to join, you can just invite them via Steam. But um, if you want to go for a dedicated server, in my opinion, also the recommended way to play Valheim, your friends will always be able to play 24 seven depending on the uptime of the server, of course. But you can see that we currently have many of them. 2,129. All right, let's hop on the single player world and get started. Okay, so we just entered the game. This is always the intro which you see. You get carried by a raven. She drops you in the forest and this is where your adventures begin. I definitely recommend you guys to always check out the tooltips Huggin has to say. So uh, we're going to press interact or talk and will say, I am Hugin, sent here to guide you in your travels. Okay, let's go over the settings very quickly. This is also quite important. So with your controls, the ones that you can use the most frequent are the use. I have this on X in most games. Then also the crouch, because you want to sneak up onto enemies. For mine is on D, because I play with Q, W, E, with my movement, also the S. And um, I have the sit on C. Build menu, also needed quite frequently. I've got this on B. And your inventory or your um, loadout pretty much is on tab. So I will always be able to use my tab to use, see everything that we currently have. And um, these are also your slots. So if you played games like Minecraft, you know that you have some active slots where you have to drag in items so you'll be able to use them. If you don't do that, well, they're just somewhere else, but you will be able to use them as well. You will have a maximum carrying capacity of 300, and I think you cannot uh, increase this, so you will have to use storage in the future. Then we also have some tabs right here, um, some uh, compendium files where you can just read some basics. We also have some skills, so every time when you do something in a game, if you jump, if you hit a tree, if you hit an enemy with a club, if you block damage, if you uh, swim, you will increase those skills. So that is very awesome. You can definitely specialize in this game in a certain thing. For example, if you want to become an archer, you focus on archery. If you want to become a guy with a very tanky gear, with a shield and with a sword, you do some blocking and some sword skills. It really makes sense and it is so much fun. Then we also have the trophies and the PvP. You can toggle this on and off, but um, I definitely recommend you guys to just keep this off for now. Um, also, if you're playing solo, it really doesn't matter. But then if you click on the map, guys, uh, you can also make this visible to others. So others will be able to see you on the map. This is super important. Actually, it took me quite some time to figure this out. And also a setting that you want to change in your graphics. I think it really depends on your rig, but um, I have all on the max V-Sync off and motion blur off as well. This actually tanks your FPS and doesn't make it look better. So right now, all we have is a torch. You can equip this one with uh, the press of one, of course. You can also sheath weapons and um, shields with R, so they will be on your back. So every time when you press R, well, this is my uh, keybind for it, uh, you will be able to sheath and unsheath them quickly. So you can actually put a combo of a club and a shield together on your back, so you will be able to instantly equip them again. So let's talk with the Raven and see what he has to say. If inspected closer, this one will reveal the summoning place of Aithir, your first prey. He's a mighty beast, so you need to properly arm yourself before even attempting to defeat him. So we're just going to read this location. 
and we will be able to see that Eichthyr is right there. So that means this is our very first boss. If we slay this one, we will also get a very awesome speed buff, which we can use in order to give ourselves a reduced stamina drain and, of course, also allies that are nearby. But um, right now, we have to focus on getting our hands on some loot in order to defeat Eichthyr. Guys, seriously, look on the ground. This is already um, some very easy stuff that we can gather right here. Some stones, and we can also punch little branches, punch little trees, which will allow us to gather wood. So we need stones and wood in order to craft our very first items. Look at that. We just improved our unarmed skill because we're cutting down trees with our very fists. Look at that. New material, wood, and uh, we just unlocked so many new crafting recipes. The stone axe, the club, and also the hammer. So for the hammer, we need stones and wood. So if you don't see this one in your craft table, you will need uh, to find some stones before you will unlock it. You also see that you will have a stamina drain. So if you use uh, attacks, if you uh, jump, if you sprint, you will reduce your stamina, but at the same time, you will of course also increase your stats. So um, let's first craft the stone axe, which will of course make it so much easier to chop down trees. And we also want to have a club right now, because look at that. We have our first enemy, a Grayling, charging upon us. What is also really nice is that you can find these random houses scattered all across the map. So this one, actually very lucky, was right next to my spawn. It has a beehive. You don't want to attack this one right now. I definitely suggest you to bring an arrow. Um, but uh, look at that. We have a chest with some flint in there and also a uh, little bit of treasure. So with our axe, we will be able to chop down trees. Definitely make sure, guys, that the trees don't crush you because that can mean an insta kill. Seriously, trees are very dangerous in the game. In the beginning, it will take quite some time to get your hands on this wood. The locks will take some time to break, but uh, the higher your woodcutting skill is, the easier they will break as well. All right, we got our hands on quite some wood right now, but um, look at my stamina. It's draining quite fast. And this is also because we need to find different sources of food. The more food we eat, um, actually the higher our HP and our stamina will be. So that is a very important key element to the game. I see some boars in the distance right there. So let's first make our club. This one will allow us to deal some more damage to them and equip this one. Now we can charge to our little boars. These are actually not very hostile, but if you get too close, they will start charging towards you. You could also use a sneak attack to take them down a lot easier. A tasty morsel. Yes, we just destroyed the boar, so that means that we have some food, some scraps, some uh, meat, which we can cook pretty soon. And we also found some raspberries, so we're also going to pick these up. Guys, very important, if you click on something with pickup, it doesn't necessarily mean that you instantly pick it up. You actually have to walk over it as well. So uh, sometimes you think like, hey, I just picked that up, right? But um, you have to walk onto it as well. Then we can eat the delicious raspberry and look at that. This will give us a slight boost of stamina and HP. And uh, we will also start regenerating HP slowly. We also have some raw meat right there, which we'll be able to cook if we have a campfire with a uh, cooking station, let's say. I just found some more boars. I'm going to do a sneak attack on this one. There we go. One hit kill. It's definitely the safest way to approach them because the boars can deal quite some damage. You also have some deers around these parts, but uh, they are pretty tough to take down if you don't have a spear or a bow. Some animals, like this one, they also have a star next to their name. So that means they're actually a little bit tougher and they will also drop more valuables. I also see some berries right here, but um, guys, definitely be careful with these guys, the graylings, in the very beginning of the game because they can be quite tricky. You can also block your enemy attacks with uh, the right mouse button, and this will allow you to prevent the damage done to you. And the cool thing is you also have some um, rolling, which you can do. So if you have uh, the right mouse hold, then you can actually roll around, but this will also cost stamina. All right, so we just reached the coast. And um, guys, seriously, if you are looking for flint, this is the place to be. There will always be scattered around these parts and uh, you can also find them quite abundantly near rivers. So guys, keep that in mind, flint, seashores and river banks. Also, be careful, guys, when swimming with your stamina, because if you run out of stamina in the water, you can actually take a lot of damage and die. 
Uh, if you get out of the water, you will get wet. So in order to dry ourselves, we're gonna set up this campfire and cook some food. So first off, we're gonna have to make this hammer. For that, we're gonna need just two more stones. All right, time to get a fire going. First off, create the hammer. So uh, we will be able to build things. This is one of the most important elements in the game. New building piece. Look at that. New stove pile, cooking station, workbench, etc., etc. So uh, we're gonna equip the hammer and then we're gonna press B to bring up the building menu. Misc, crafting, building, and also furniture. Of course, in order to craft more things, you're gonna have to build a workbench. We're gonna talk about that in another video, but right now we're gonna put down a campfire and cook some food. So we're gonna press uh, craft. We're also gonna do the cooking station. So what you can do pretty much is place it down with the left mouse button. And also if you want to rotate a building, you're just gonna use your mouse wheel. And if you think it's a nice position, you're just going to left click. There we go. Always very important if you want to cook food, guys, you have to have the cooking station right on top of it. And right now, we can pretty much click this one X to cook an item. And you can uh, stack two items in there. And right now, they will start to cook. After a couple of seconds, they will actually be finished. You can also just rest a little bit by the campfire. This will increase your comfort level. So also regenerating things like HP and stamina. All right, there you go. We just heard the sound of it being ready. We can just take the food from the thing. We're going to place more of that so uh, we can just keep cooking food for another adventure. And um, I'm going to place it right here. I always place my three food sources in the closest slots to uh, the center of my screen, let's say. It will allow you to eat food very quickly, even when you're in trouble. Uh, so uh, we eat some meat, we eat a new mushroom, and we also eat the berry. And look at that, guys. We just boosted our HP to a very high level. Right now, we will be able to get our hands on plus 100 HP, and our stamina bar is also a lot bigger right now. So that means you will be able to travel more, you will be able to uh, slash down trees a lot quicker and more efficiently. So you definitely want to diversify your diet a little bit. All right, so guys, that's pretty much it for the basics in Valam. Now you know how to survive your very first day and, of course, also prepare for the night. Get a fire going and stuff that tummy with some different types of foods. So you will be able to crank up your HP and stamina to the maximum. I gave you some basic survival tips like blocking, hunting, and also sneaking. But in the future, I will show you a lot more advanced guides. Guys, big thanks for watching. If you enjoyed watching this one, definitely make sure to hit that like button. In the next video, we're going to cover the basics of building. So definitely make sure to check that one out. Right now, it is 4 am out. Time to work on a new video project, guys. I will see you very soon. Over and out. Take care.